All right, we are here with former Alabama quarterback Jay Barker. Thanks so much for joining us today. Most definitely. Thanks for having me. All right, so just a couple questions first of all. You were in a position when you were uh, at quarterback at Alabama where, you know, you were the starter, you were the guy. The past two seasons, this season, last season, not so much certainty there. Do you see that being a challenge for Coach Saban and the team? No, because they've been there before. I mean, you look at Greg McElroy was a first-year starter national championship, McCarron, Cam Newton. I mean, like the SEC really in their national championship run were first-year starting quarterbacks. A.J. got it in the second year for a repeat. So it's, which guy's going to step up, make the plays, more importantly not hurt the team with turnovers or just bad decisions? If, if he can find that, I think Coach Saban will be very happy. I personally think Jay Coker will probably end up winning the job just based on his um, maturity. He's older. I think David Cornwell and the other guys got a lot of great uh, intangibles. Uh, but a guy that's actually taking snaps, been at his center, the guys know him, even though he's only been there for a year and a half. I, I think he's got a great shot at winning that position. And I mean, how important having that SEC experience already for Jake, how important is that going into this season? I think it's big, and I think, too, just being around two programs. I mean, he's been around Jimbo Fisher, who's an excellent quarterback coach. Um, he actually was who taught me how to play the position coming out of high school. My mom was the secretary at Sanford, and under Terry Bowden, he was coaching there. And so I went from free safety to quarterback for my senior year, and he worked with me. And so I've seen what he's done. And so if Jake was under him at all, and now with Lane, Lane's one of the best in the country, um, now it's just about him being confident and going out there and leading the team. And like I said, in this offense and the way Coach Saban does it, you don't have to go out there and just you know throw it all the time. You're going to have great talent around you. Use the talent, distribute the ball, don't make turnovers. And I think that those quarterbacks can be successful. There's a lot of talent down there, and everybody says, we well, don't have, you know, you got five, but you don't have one. There's going to be one that will emerge and, and do a great job like Blake did last year and uh, have all the confidence in the world that Coach Saban will find that guy and Lane Kiffin will coach him up. And just looking at the offense as a whole, Coach Saban before last season was outspoken against the spread offense, just the hurry up style of uh, offense. Yet last year, I think he kind of embraced it a little bit more with you know having Amari Cooper, especially you have to use him. Um, what do you think caused that transition to happen? I think sometimes uh, you, you try not to do something for a long period of time. And you just finally go, okay, I got to kind of give in to this. And I think last year it fit them. I mean, Amari playing in space, letting Blake get on the corners and do the things that he could do, running the football. Um, and he became a lot better quarterback, a better manager of the game, and really confident out there. I think the guys, him, you know, stepping into the hole at the line of scrimmage, you could just tell that there was an error about him that we had not seen in Blake Smith before, that, hey, I'm the guy now. And I don't think he'd, ever, he'd always been the backup guy. Um, but with Coach Saban, I think, you know, it's just where it is now. I mean, it's it's about trying to take defenses out of their schemes, knowing what they're doing by pre snap reads, getting to the line of scrimmage quickly. And I think as an offensive guy, we know what we're doing. We just want to go out there and react and play. Defense hates it when you go quick or when your movement stuff to make them think on that side of the football can disrupt them a ton. So I, I think he's seen it. He understands that he's had a tough time defending it. And uh, why not embrace it, and at least on some level, and allow your offense to score more points. And towards the end of your career, you're more of a game manager kind of guy. AJ was kind of that guy. You just mentioned Blake was kind of that guy. Do you see any of the guys that, right now that could potentially grow into that role? Definitely. I mean, like I said, Jake Coker, all those guys could. I mean, they get so much talent around them uh, to do those things. The key at that position is to lead, is to um, be a field general, be the coach on the field, be confident, and don't uh, let guys see you wavering or worried about Just go out there and execute make good decisions at the last scrimmage, get people into the right plays. And again, turnovers will kill you. And, and this year they've got a great punter, J.K. Scott. Adam Griffin is going to be healthy, really, for the first time in a long time. So they got special teams. You're going to have a great defense. Go out there and play to, you know, not, not scared, not conservative. Just go play, but don't make mistakes. If you don't do that, Alabama's got a chance to win a ton of football games this year. All right, we are just talking about this. Let's talk a little about the SEC kind of as a whole and, you know, fans and all that. Um, at the end of last season, both Alabama and Auburn beat by Big Ten teams. People were a little concerned, I think, about the dominance of the SEC West. Do you see that as a concern going into the future? I don't know if it, I mean – Definitely, the bowl games have not been good to the SEC West, especially last year. But, um, man, when you work through that gauntlet of, of games, I mean, think about Alabama really went through almost a playoff scenario from LSU, Auburn, SEC championship game, and then playing in that 14 playoff. That's a gauntlet to run through. And they got to figure out, ask a statement that this morning, did you learn anything this year about how to handle that, that last part of your season? Is there, are there things you can do to get guys rest or get healthier? 
And he said, you know, really, we're just kind of looking at all those things, trying to figure out, you know, what could we have done better where we didn't run out of gas? Because they felt like they did, even with a couple of weeks, uh, a few weeks rest going into that 14 playoff against Ohio State. But give the Big Ten credit. I mean, Urban Meyer went up there and said, I mean, he made the statement, I'm going to go create the Alabama of the Big Ten, and we're going to be SEC North. You know, and so he knew the formula is this to win, and not just win, but win championships. Uh, he's got a little bit easier road throughout the year to stay healthy, and uh, the SEC's just got to deal with it, you know, and realize that they got to figure it out and, and get back at it. We're only two years removed, though, from a national. It, it, it's not that bad yet. So. Okay, good. Yeah. So everyone can relax. Yes, All right. Definitely. So looking at the SEC West, um, we were talking about earlier that old school offense, Arkansas is kind of still doing that. How are they so successful at doing that? Well, I mean, they're successful doing that. They've only won two SEC games, even though uh, I think Brett Bielema is building the, building it the right way. And I think they're just a work in progress. They're, they're working on the trenches offensively and defensively, saying if we can win the line of scrimmage, we're going to have a great chance to win games. they got to now find out a way to get their quarterback and receivers involved in the passing game as far as big plays down the field, scoring points quicker. Um, but, you know, I, I think his philosophy has worked. It worked in the Big Ten with, with Wisconsin. I don't think – based on what we're seeing now with the offices and the SEC, that he can continually do that week in and week out. He's going to have to have the ability to uh, be explosive on offense at times. And it can come off of all the things they're doing off play, action, pass, getting guys open, but take some shots. Do some things to get points uh, early and quick. And if he doesn't do that, I think they're, they'll struggle for a while until they can figure that out. Um, but, you know, the SEC West, they got some coaches, man. I mean, guys have great resumes, just like Brett Bielema does coming out of uh, the Big Ten, and I think um, you know that's what makes the SEC so special. Great players, great coaches, great coordinators, and great fans. And one of the new people, new teams in the SEC, Missouri, it seems like every year they just don't get their respect. People this year are talking, even they're even talking about Tennessee before they talk about Missouri. What do you think that they have to do stopping that redheaded stepchild? Well, and, and my wife is a big Missouri fan. She's from Missouri, right outside of Columbia, so she grew up there. And, and you know, I'm like, well, you're the show me state. We're always like, you know, show me. You know, and she's like, we're going to show you. And, you know, they come in, and I told her, I said, you know, Texas A&M will be the first, you know, one to kind of show us. And they did with Johnny Manziel. But then Gary Ping was just such a great coach, and they don't get the respect they should. They'll be back. They'll contend again this year. I mean, that's just the kind of coach he is. The, the staff is together. They've been together for a long period of time. Um, so they'll be another force or will be a force again to be reckoned with. And you're right. They don't probably don't get the attention they should and the credit they do for what they've already accomplished. And you're on the opening drive with Al Greco every morning on Jocks. Um, he's the Auburn guy. Obviously, you're the Alabama guy. Do you ever get some slack from Alabama fans for defending Auburn sometimes? No. <laughs> Yes. All the time. Um, if I say anything nice about Gus Malzahn or Rhett Lashley, and you know these are people that you know you had a chance to meet and get to know, and um, but that's fans. I mean, that's, it, it doesn't matter either way. But Al and I joke about it all the time that we have to be, we have to be um, almost, you know, we have to be homers towards our school and almost anti the other. And for me, it's like, man, we're so blessed in our state to have two great schools. And I'd love for the national championship to run through that Iron Bowl every single year, especially getting to that SEC title game. Um, you know, but at the end of the day, if Auburn loses, it doesn't hurt my feelings one bit. <laughs> but I don't want to see him lose. But you know, it's, it's we have fun with it. And Tony does a great job mediating that Alabama and Auburn rivalry there on the opening drive every single morning on Jock. So we have a good time together. We, we're we're a lot more lighthearted about it because we play. We understand how hard it is and how tough it is just to win games. All right, good yeah. to know. So. The Alabama fan base, I know we are in Birmingham, Tuscaloosa is closer to uh, Hoover than any other school in the SEC, but I mean, the throngs of fans that just show up here at 6 o'clock in the morning every day just get a glimpse of, you know, guys like you, guys like Nick Saban, any of the players. What's so special about the Alabama fan base? They just love it. I mean, they're they're very committed. They're fanatics, and that's what fan is, and um, I, I think it's just a rich tradition of championships. I think it's uh, parents going to games. Grandparents, kids, grandkids. I mean, you talked about growing up on the West Coast. You, your parents took you to games, and you became a football fan. And you come over to the SEC, where you know it's real. Yeah. <laughs> and people get hey. mad. No, no. I mean, like, like it's. I mean, like there it's real, but here it's like really real. The real, real. Yeah. yeah. But um, so I, I think that's just. It's just a. Um, family community affair. High school football is the same way. It's just that it's just something that we grow up around and um, you know, thank God for it. It's made it made it a lot of fun, you know, growing up here in it and then playing in it and now getting to do a job that I still haven't had to grow up yet. So that's good. Perfect. Yeah. Well thanks so much Jay for your time thank today. You. you can catch Jay Barker on the opening drive with Aldo Greco on Jux. Guys